Hello all! Recently I did a video exploring the realms of Grethor, the Klingon's underworld, and this time we're looking into the antithesis of that, the heavens of Stovacor. However, we never get to see just what Stovacor looks like or anything, so I'm going to have to use a lot of proxy images and footage. I hope you understand. The Klingon mythology has changed several times over its history. For example, Klingons used to mummify their dead, a practice that some houses continued to observe into the 23rd century, basing their interpretation of Klingon culture on traditions most had left behind. One such house was that of Tukuvma, formerly Girja, whose leadership even kept an old sarcophagus ship called a Ship of the Dead where mummified Klingons were attached in coffins around the outside of the hull. The more commonly followed belief was that the body was merely a vessel for the soul and worthless once the spirit had departed. An honourable Klingon death is traditionally marked by a death howl from their comrades and fellow warriors that can be heard in Stovacor. It is a warning to the heavens that a warrior's soul is incoming so make ready to receive them. When a Klingon dies, but is unable to realise or accept this fact, a false reality is formed around them called the Naj, the dream before dying. In this, the individual surrounds themselves with images and figments from their life continuing on, but the fact that they have passed will make itself known in visions and such. This continues until warriors from the afterlife enter into the Naj and slay everything anchoring the lost soul to this dream reality. If the Klingon is bound for Grethor, then the warriors are from the Barge of the Dead. Or they could be from Stovacor. Stovacor itself is never seen, but described as a large stone castle. It is in these halls of this stronghold that the Klingons return to at the conclusion of days of combat and adventure to celebrate with one another and revel in their achievements and those of others. Outside of these walls is even less developed in the lore, but supposedly it is a land that allows for endless battles against other Klingons and foes to test the mettle of any warrior. Endless, because, you know, they're already dead, so I assume they simply respawn after every war, dust themselves off, slap their opponents on the back, yell kapla, and then head back to the halls of Stovacor to get drunk. Rinse and repeat. Kalis, the unforgettable, is probably the most famous Klingon. Although he is considered a messiah of sorts, he was not involved in the creation of the afterlife, nor is he a god. That's kind of the point, his tales and parables dictate a way of honourable life that any Klingon can achieve and hopefully gain entry and join him and the honoured in Stovacor. In fact, in return for being such a paragon of Klingon virtue, Kalis has been awarded the honour of being the guardian of Stovacor, where he waits to shepherd in new souls and protect it from the unworthy. There is also the addition of the concept of the Black Fleet, which is perhaps an alternate version of Stovacor, or may even have originated from an entirely different Klingon religion. However, from at least the 23rd century, the concept of Stovacor and the Black Fleet were not irreconcilable with one another, and are actually a part of the same mythos. The Black Fleet was in essence a fleet made of all the dead warriors and those that the warriors had conquered in life, not just Klingons. Which also helps add to the Klingon mentality of expansion and conquest, especially in the older empire. Those who ended up serving the Klingons would potentially join their masters in the afterlife of Stovacor, still as servants, but from a Klingon point of view, what better fate could there be for a non-Klingon? They're really doing you a favour by conquering your planet. Honest, how very Klingon. Anyway, your position in the Black Fleet was designated by your achievements in life. How honoured you were, how triumphant. A mighty warrior might end up serving on a powerful vessel or even captain a ship. And I don't know about you, but for some reason, I'm picturing old sailboats, not spaceships. But I guess it could be either? 
There are a lot of nautical analogies in the afterlife of the Klingons. The Barge of the Dead, the Black Fleet, and this ties into their real world inspirations, especially from TNG onwards, being Viking and Norse myths. Valhalla in Nordic tales is the afterlife where some of the honoured dead go, the halls of the slain in the land of Asgard ruled over by Odin. Here, just as in Stovakor, you engage in endless revelry and training awaiting the day of Ragnarok. In addition to this, last part I've pointed out how the Klingon Barge of the Dead had a massive ship cleaver on the front, and this points to a period of ship-to-ship -ship sea combat in the ancient Klingon past. Such naval rams were not typical of Viking raiders, but with the references to this mythical black fleet made up all of the dead, clearly the Klingons had a very long and involved history with conflicts on the seas of Kronos. So, considering that the Klingon Empire is an interstellar power, the prevalence of ships being a part of their afterlife probably saw a resurgence with their development of space vessels. As Klingons began to develop warp technology after the rise of Kalis, all records point to the fact that they stole it from the invading species the Herc around the 1300s, it's possible that we saw a major shift in their religious beliefs around then. The only spanner in the works is trying to pin down exactly when Kalis lived, because the Klingons have myths of him from 800 AD to the Herc invasion, so I'm going to leave that there because it stops making sense and I realise I'm trying to analyse a fiction within a fiction. In summary, Stovakor is most likely the name of the halls where the honoured dead go, and at some point during their revelry and entertaining skirmishes, the Klingons are expected to man the Black Fleet for some reason. I bet it's all in preparation for a Ragnarok-style doomsday, where all the Klingons are supposed to storm into Grethor and conquer that too, so they are building an undead army for that. Plus, you would need a fleet of ships to cross the River of Blood. Hmm. Thanks for watching this video on Stover Core and the afterlife of the Klingons. There are a couple more videos concerning Klingon culture that I'd like to put together, but that's for another time. So thanks again, I've been Rick, and Kpla.